Hi, and welcome to beautiful San Antonio, Texas. My name is Deanna Guerrero, and thank you for joining me today. As you can see, I'm taping outside, um, and I, I say beautiful San Antonio, Texas, because to me, San Antonio is a beautiful place to live. Um, some people would say, oh, it's so hot here, but you won't hear me complain too much about the heat. Um, I grew up in Iowa, and it was very cold in the winter, and um, I just always had a dream of moving to Texas. So one of my dreams has come true. Um, I love it here. San Antonio is the place for me at this time in my life. But today I want to talk to you about some boundaries that we place in our lives. Um, you know, what is a boundary? Well, we all have them. <laughs> for instance, this wall behind me is a fence and it's a fence around my property around my house so that's a boundary that's around my house um, we have boundaries inside our house such as a bedroom in our workplace we have boundaries and we call them offices we have boundaries in our marriages and we have boundaries with our children you know we do need boundaries but sometimes there are boundaries um, that are setting limits on our life that keep us from fulfilling or living that extraordinary life that God has called you to live. And that's what I want to talk to you about. We don't want to have those boundaries that are keeping us from the good life that God has predestined us to live. So that's what we're going to talk about. You know, boundaries normally in our life are not something as obvious or visible as this fence behind me or a door. Um, they usually are something invisible that we become comfortable with. They're not so obvious, you know. Maybe it's um, something mentally or emotionally. Um, it could be spiritual. Um, a lot of times it is spiritual. And sometimes it's even physical, such as a sickness or something in our physical life that we just get comfortable with and that we tolerate and we just kind of live with. And we don't want to do that. Um, you know, how do these boundaries get in our lives? Well, boundaries, most boundaries, are a product of our culture, um, our upbringing, our past, you know, the way that we are raised. Um, you know, we've got to really think about what are the boundaries in my life? You know, a lot of the, the boundaries are how we were raised um, in our family, the different things that we always did as a family, or, well, you know, I could never do that because nobody in my family has ever gone to college, or no one in my family has ever lived past the age of 55. We've all gotten um, heart disease, or all the women die of breast cancer. You know, these are boundaries that we don't realize that we've, we've erected in our life. So we need to learn how to get rid of those boundaries. You know, and I once read that 88% of what we do, we do subconsciously. We do it without any conscious thought. Even 88% of what we say is subconscious. It's just within us and it comes out. It's within us and we do it. Because that's the way that we've always thought and we've always done it. So we are only doing things consciously 12% of the time. Can you imagine? That's just a little bit above 10%, you know, and that's probably on a good day. So if you think about it, your past, your culture, and your family are habits that you create, that have created who you are today. My habits, my family, my culture, the way that I've lived have created who I am today. So, you know, a boundary um, indicates a limit. So this wall indicates a limit. It's a limit to the end of my property. But we have invisible boundaries in our lives. So we all need to face the truth that we have boundaries, that we have limits in our lives. And also realize that we're probably comfortable with them, that we don't want to move behind the, beyond those, those comfort levels, if you will, because you know, it makes us uncomfortable. Change makes us uncomfortable. It's like starting a new exercise routine. You know, your body's sore at first. Well, it's the same thing when you start trying to push past those boundaries. Um, I'm reminded of a story, and you probably heard it because it's a, it's a history story, 
um, and since I'm a runner, I follow, you know, running. Um, up until 1954, no one had um, ran faster than a four minute mile. Nobody had run a four minute mile rather. And at least no recorded time had been run faster than four minutes. But in 1954, a man passed that limit. He ran a four minute mile. And do you know that after that, people began to run, men I'll say, began to run a four minute mile left and right. There was no longer a boundary. The same goes for, you know, the first man on the moon. Nobody had gone to the moon ever until one day somebody did. And then after that, how many people have been on the moon? You know, so these are boundaries that have, have always existed. Experts say they could never be passed, and they were. You know, just think about the airplane. You know, um, all of us have probably grown up with airplanes and flying you know or the internet but these were all things that were not supposed to be able to be done but somebody pushed past that limit now, we all have limits in our life um, you know maybe it's something as simple as losing that 25 pounds and you're saying well you know I've tried to lose it and I've lost it and I gain it back and then I gain that more back or maybe it's a promotion you know that you've been applying for and every time you're passed over um, it could be any number of things that that are holding you back that that there is a boundary there because you've tried and it hasn't worked so you don't press past it but we have to get past that point you know maybe you've started a business in the in the past and it's failed and so now you have this dream of starting that business again but you are scared you have fear of pressing past that limit pressing past that boundary because you are scared of failure you know we've all been there and done that you know um, I'll just give you an example from my past um, I was an extremely shy timid person I was the kind of child that would hide behind my mother's skirt even for in front of relatives you know I would hide behind my cower and behind my mom's skirt wouldn't come out because I was just so timid and afraid I believe and um, I was this way my whole life if the teacher called on me I would you know see myself or feel myself turn red and then later a friend would say oh you turned red in class you know I could never get up and answer the teacher I could never raise my hand and speak confidently. I was so timid. I was so shy. I could never see myself standing in front of you today speaking to you. And, uh, you know, it was um, a terrifying feeling. But I knew that God had a plan for me. And um, He couldn't change me over. Well, He could have, but, you know, I would have had to have been a willing participant. And I had so much fear within me that it was almost an impossibility for me to speak in front of anyone. But you know, God took me step by step. He took me a little by little, little by little, He brought me out of that. And then one time, one time I heard that being shy is really just a focusing on yourself, like everybody's looking at me, you know, and you have to stop thinking that. Stop thinking that everybody's looking at you, judging you, you know, because then you're really just focusing on you. Start focusing on those that you're speaking to. Focus on something else. And once you do that, then you're no longer shy. Your, your self-focus is gone. So I started thinking about that. And then I started asking God, please take that away from me and give me a spirit of boldness. And then I went to the Word of God and I started reading what God's Word said about me. And He said, you are more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ Jesus. And I started repeating this little saying to myself, and it's from Psalms 45, 1. It says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. So I would just speak that over myself, and it would help me. It gave me confidence. As a matter of fact, when I first um, started attending a prayer group, I could never even pray in front of others. I couldn't even say my name in front of the other, the other parents that attended the meeting. But little by little, God brought me out. He trained me up. And um, now I actually lead that group. 
Um, so praise God. But you know, even being timid to with other parents, um, I always felt like they don't like me. You know, I'm I'm not going to go talk to them. You know, they they know that I I'm just so unworthy to be here. You know, I had so much um, I, I lacked self um, uh, I lacked any type of um, oh, now my my tongue is a pin of a ready writer. I lacked any kind of self confidence. And God would just tell me, I would be at a function and he would say, see that lady over there? I'd be like, yeah, oh my, you know, she's so beautiful, she's so smart, and you know, she's this or that. And he would say, I want you to go introduce yourself to her. I'm like, oh no, not me, Lord. And he's like, go do it. So I would march over there and say, okay, Lord, I could do all things for you would strengthen me. And I'd put up my hand and say, hi, I'm Deanna Guerrero, and I'm so-and-so's mom. And, you know, and it started a conversation, and then it opened a friendship. Now, I'm no longer so intimidated by those women, but if I am, you know, because there's always going to be those situations, I will ask the Lord to help me. So that's a boundary that I have overcome. And again, like I said, one of the boundaries was speaking in front of people. Now I have a dream of going to all 50 states and preaching the gospel to everyone um, that will listen to me. And not only that, but to travel to other countries and speak to them, you know, um, as I've never been able to before, speak to them of our Lord Jesus Christ, minister to them, and teach them some of the things that I'm teaching you. So we have to get to that point where we no longer listen to those voices in our head. We no longer listen to the past. We no longer listen to those friends or those family members that are telling us that we can't do it that we, we will fail, that we won't succeed. You have to. So then we have to get, how do we do it? By taking this, by taking the Word of God and applying it and reading it, um, just like I told you I did, and saying no more boundaries. We speak to that situation and say no more boundaries. Now, I want us to turn to um, 1 Corinthians 3.3. 3 something on here because the wind is blowing my little paper. So we're going to turn to 1 Corinthians um, 3, 3. If you will, write this down so you'll have it. I'm going to speak loudly because there's lots of traffic going by. And it says, For you are still unspiritual, having the nature of the flesh under the control of ordinary impulses. For as long as there are envy and jealousy and wrangling and factions among you, are you not in spiritual and of the flesh behaving yourself after a human standard and like mere unchanged men? Now this is from the Amplified Version. And it's basically saying, you know, where it says here, having yourselves after a human standard and like mere unchanged men. You know, we're born again. We are new creations created in Christ Jesus. So in this verse, Paul is referring to, when it says mere, it means to have a boundary. It means you're acting like you have a boundary. But God is saying that you don't have a boundary, that you are a new creation created in Christ Jesus, that you can do all things through him which strengtheneth you. So you're, you're living an ordinary life, the mere man with boundary with boundaries. You don't want to live a life of boundaries. You want to live a life free, going on that next journey that God has for you, going toward that extraordinary dream that he has for you. And you do that through the word of God. <laughs> Sorry, I have to get my notebook. Okay. Now let me give you, um, I've given you an example of when I was extremely shy, how I couldn't speak in front of others, how I was just too embarrassed that I felt like everyone was looking at me. Well now I actually want people to be listening to me and looking at me so that I can teach them what the Lord has taught to me. And I actually um, have a friend that lives all the way on the other side of the, um, the world in Dubai and she just came into town recently and she's like, I've been watching you in Dubai. It's the only way I can see you. So praise God, people on other sides of the world are, are actually um, getting to see me. Now I want us to turn to Hebrews 12.1. We'll base everything on the Word of God here. Now, if you see that I'm kind of glistening, it's because, you know, we are in South Texas and it's 
warm. I'm trying to tape early so it won't be so, so warm. Okay, so it says, I'm going to read from the Amplified again. Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary weight. That could be a boundary. And that sin which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us. See, it keeps us from going forward. And let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Now, God set that dream before you. He has given it to you. He has predestined that you fulfill that dream, that you have to run it. It's, not, it's going to be with persistence. It says, and active persistence, steady and active persistence, the, the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Now, if you don't take that course, if you don't say, I'm going to do it, and you do it with purpose, then you're not going to accomplish it. That boundary is going to stay there. It's not going to go anywhere. You have to change what you did yesterday if you want your tomorrow to change. You have to do something differently. And the only way to do that is to put the Word of God first place in your life. It has to become so important to you. It has to become um, more important than your next meal. You have to hunger and thirst for it. It has to become more important than your favorite television show. You have to be willing to turn off the TV and say, you know what? I want to see what God says that I can do from His Word. I want to see what God says about me in His Word. So then you open your Bible and you start reading it. Now a lot of people will say, but I just don't understand what the Word of God is saying or where to find these promises. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide and direct you because I didn't. I asked, I, I had a hunger and thirst and I would read the Bible, but I didn't understand and I still don't. I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'm still a student of the Word, just as you will be your whole life. Um, but I just started reading it and I started speaking it over me. Like the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I would just start reading whatever the, the, the Lord put in front of me. I would ask him, show me what this means. Show me how to apply it to my life. And like I said, he would give me scriptures. He gave me Psalms 45, 1. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. We have to do what Joshua says. Do you remember what we read last week? And he told Joshua, be strong and courageous. So you have to be strong and courageous. And then he said, this book of the law shall not depart from before your eyes. Read it. Meditate on it. Listen to it. Speak it. And then do it. And when you do this, you'll see these boundaries coming down. Now, it'll be a little by little. And most of the time, God will give you one little step to, to take. Like me, he told me, go and introduce yourself. Go meet that person. And I did it. Go to that prayer group and pray with those ladies. And I did it. And before you know it, you'll be standing in front of your dream and there will be no boundary between you and that dream. And the Word of God says, if God be for me, so God's before you, then who can be against you? Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week.